Live. This is Black Hills Fox News at 9 with Justin Pezzera and Julie Oberlander. Real people, real news. One year ago, protesters trying to make a point took their message to the top of Mount Rushmore. Today, we take a look at the changes that have helped reshape the face of security at the Shrine of Democracy. That story is first on Fox tonight. Nothing like it had ever been seen before. It was a year ago today that environmental activists breached security in a bold protest at Mount Rushmore. When Greenpeace activists hung a huge banner over the edge of the carving, it caused a re-evaluation of policies at the memorial. Black Hills Fox reporter Al Van Zee has the story. It was an audacious move that surprised visitors to Mount Rushmore a year ago. It also stunned officials at Mount Rushmore. The Greenpeace activists made it past the security system surrounding the mountain. They then climbed to the top of the carving and unrolled a banner demanding that President Obama take action on global warming. The protesters were taken into custody. Since the protest staged by Greenpeace last year, officials at Mount Rushmore say security has been improved with updated equipment and new procedures. That security system that we had in place at that time was a very dated one. We'd been trying for a number of years to upgrade it. As it turned out, some of the security cameras on the mountain weren't working that day. Some had been turned off for a group tour of the carving. Once it had been demonstrated how vulnerable Mount Rushmore was, it didn't take long for the money to be allocated for new equipment. Recognize that, well, that, that existing system probably was not adequate, and we've been making changes to that. Probably the most significant change is that uh, we've implemented a security strategy that's quite a bit more aggressive than it was before. And as part of that security strategy, that includes a, a broad strategic look at our whole security posture for the mountain. Officials at Mount Rushmore say it will be infinitely more difficult to get past security today at the park than it was a year ago. And they emphasize that Rushmore today is a very safe place. The park's always been safe. Um, what the Greenpeace incident did was help wake us up to where some of our um, areas for improvement would be in the security system. The Greenpeace organization was fined more than $30,000 in civil penalties for the protest. More charges against the individual protesters may yet be brought. And while it's debatable a year later whether the Greenpeace protesters achieved their objective of encouraging politicians to act on global warming, it certainly forced Mount Rushmore National Memorial to enhance security. Al Van C. Black Hills Fox News. The group says we need to move away from what they call dirty fuels to renewable forms of energy. Some local activists were out at Founders Park in Rapid City today speaking out against the proposed Keystone XL oil pipeline through South Dakota. A release from the National Wildlife Federation says the event was part of a series of events around the country today. The local organizer says that the pipeline just would not be safe. I know, I thought that was that's, that's one of the main issues, the why, why we're opposed to it. Uh, if uh, We think that if you're going to invest that much money, you might as well invest money in, in, in a good pipe. Um, it, it endangers the land, it endangers the people, and, it, and it, it, it doesn't make any sense. TransCanada spokesman Terry Cunha says the Keystone XL pipeline will meet or exceed all guidelines put into place by the U.S. Department of Transportation. Cunha says when the agency approved the pipeline, they said it would be as safe or safer than any other pipeline. Saturday mail delivery may soon be a thing of the past, but before the United States Postal Service cuts back, South Dakota's congressional delegates say the agency needs to strongly consider other money-saving alternatives. The delegates spoke out about the possible cut in, on Saturday service yesterday during a visit to the Black Hills. All three say they understand the Postal Service, like many other agencies, is trying to come up with ways to meet budget constraints, but they agree the best way to achieve savings is by reducing the cost of operations. Right now, uh, almost everybody in America is trying to figure out ways to, uh, to save money in their budgets, and that should be where the, the Postal Service starts. Now, uh, they might argue that uh, going, doing away with Saturday service is doing that, but I think there are lots of other ways that they could uh, cut their overhead, uh, cut their day-to-day uh, -day operational costs, and I would like to see them do that first. It may sound like that's something that would work for people in urban, suburban, more metropolitan areas, but we're talking about very rural, very remote parts of South Dakota, an older demographic that relies on that six-day service. Well, the Postal Service is also considering raising the cost of stamps by two cents in lieu of reducing services. A sluggish economy means credit is tight for many small businesses, but now some big companies are trying to lend a helping hand. Black Hills Fox reporter Megan Polera explains. 
Brian Vulcan knows better than anyone how tough it is to get a loan right now. He's the president of Forefront Design, a small development company in Rapid City. For nearly a year, Forefront has struggled to secure the capital needed to build a $30 million presidential plaza in downtown Rapid. What I'm finding is that banks are at least starting to take a harder look at some of these projects. The terms have changed and the um, and the conditions in which they have to meet to get that lending is certainly changed. While the banks may be giving a little, it's still not enough, which is why Sam's Club is getting into the loan business. The company announced this week that it's starting a new program in conjunction with Superior Financial Group, offering its members loans of up to $25,000. The Sam's Club program is just one of several introduced to spur small business lending and stimulate the economy. Others argue the program doesn't fix the real problem, getting people in the stores. They say credit problems will improve once consumers start spending again. We have to get a, the, a community, the, the society and the economics to uh, start to stabilize enough so people can make some long range decisions to hire more people, produce more product. And that type of thing. But Vulcan, who works in an industry where unemployment sits at 24%, disagrees. He says it's programs like Sam's Clubs that keep the economic engine running. When people take out a loan, they just don't hang on to that money. They go and they use it in another business, and then that business now uses it somewhere else. The Federal Reserve says it will hold a forum next week to explore ways to improve the flow of lending to small businesses. Until then, Sam's Club officials say business owners are wasting no time cashing in on their program. In Rapid City, Megan Polera, Black Hills, Fox News. Comfortable temperatures and sunshine have finally found the Black Hills. Let's get over to meteorologist Keith Gibson to see if the great weather will be sticking around. Hey there, Keith. Hey guys, uh, we are looking at pretty nice weather for our Friday. Also into the weekend too, but the chances for storms will increase. We'll see what happens later on, however. Today, very nice. Into the 80s across the plains, some 70s around the Black Hills, so a little bit cooler with some cloud cover right now. We are mostly clear. It's going to remain clear tonight, but it should be warmer overall. 55 in Rapid City. The wind is light. Still that risk for some upper 40s across the higher elevations, also across the Wyoming Plains, but a lot of low to mid 50s across the South Dakota Plains tonight. So quiet, a little bit warmer tonight. Tomorrow, much warmer than where we have been recently. We're looking at some widespread mid to upper 80s across the plains, including Rapid City, Hot Springs, Gillette, Spearfish, 84 degrees. Now, I can't rule out an isolated storm in the afternoon, but as I just mentioned, better chances for moisture will come this weekend. I'll have that weekend forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Keith. We are a little over four weeks away from the start of this year's Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. It is truly one of those love it or hate it kind of events. Jack Cottle has more. For some people, the Sturgis Rally is something they start looking forward to the day the previous year's ends. For others, they would rather just get out of town for the week. And that takes us to our Tell It to Fox question of the week. This week, we want to know, are you looking forward to this year's Sturgis Motorcycle Rally? What, if any, changes would you like to see this year from years past? Terry Lochner of Blackhawk writes, I wouldn't mind the rally nearly as much if there wasn't so much noise from motorcycles with no mufflers. It's my understanding that there is a fine of about $110. I asked a South Dakota Highway Patrolman how many tickets he wrote for this last year. He said none. Nancy Nordyke of Rapid City writes, they make earplugs. All the extra people is good for everyone in business. Linda M. Keehan of Rapid City writes, I haven't been to the rally in years, but if they don't have trolleys out to the Buffalo Chip and the others, they should. It would lessen the road traffic, be less DUIs and accidents. You can read those complete letters plus more and let us know what you think by going to our website at BlackHillsFox.com and clicking on the Tell It to Fox button on the right side of the page. You can also get to the question on our Facebook and Twitter pages. We'll have more responses tomorrow. Nightclub partying in Florida turns into panic and surveillance video captures the scene. That's our top story as Fox's Shepard Smith takes us on a trip across America. Florida. The guy in the white hat there is the target of a shooting. And here he is a little later, right before police say somebody shot him in the back. The 23-year-old died, two others hurt. Here's the scene right after the gunfire. You can see folks running away. Cops say somebody also robbed the place. Washington, a United States Coast Guard helicopter crashing off the coast of Olympic Peninsula, west of Seattle. Three of the four crew on board killed. 
A witness says the aircraft was flying very low and clipped some power lines right before it went down. Ohio, a roof collapsing at a sauerkraut factory in Fremont. It killed a man who was welding at the time. Three others hurt. The welders were replacing support columns in the place. The town's mayor described the cave-in as a freak accident. North Dakota. Meet the new groundskeepers at this golf course in Bismarck. The superintendent says he was having trouble keeping up with the weeds, so he brought in two goats. They worked out so well, he added three more. That superintendent says golfers have taken to the animals and feed and pet them, and they're part of a fox watch across America. Well, Kate Gibson has friends who golf at that golf course. Oh, really? I'm curious to know how they do with I'd, the animals roaming around. <laughs> I think we need goats up here for the fox uh, parking lot. Maybe. Perhaps. It's a little wild sometimes. Still to come tonight on Black Hills Fox News at 9. It turns out that South Dakota's walk-in areas program for hunters helped bolster the state's economy. The details are coming up when your late news continues. But before we get to that, outdoor enthusiasts and ATVers rejoice. Grant money will be flowing into the state to help recreational trail programs here in the Black Hills. Stay with us. Black Hills Fox News at 9. We'll be right back. The events. The office five times a week. Weeknights at 1030. Still ahead tonight on Black Hills Fox News, Americans are fighting back against one particular disease and they're winning. Find out more coming up in Health Watch headed your way in about 15 minutes. The governor's office announced today that Governor Mike Rounds has approved nearly $1 million in grants through the Recreational Trails Program for various projects across South Dakota. Most of the money, nearly $360,000, will go to the U.S. Forest Service for its off-highway vehicle trail system in the Black Hills National Forest. Rapid City will get $200,000 to construct a trail in the Deadwood Avenue drainage area. Custer is getting $40,000 for Phase 3 of its Big Rock Park trail project. The Mickelson Trail will receive $110,000 for trail improvements, and Custer State Park is getting $64,000 also for trail improvements. The governor's office says revenue for the recreational trails program comes from the Federal Highway Trust Fund. It turns out that walk-in hunting areas in South Dakota have been good for business. A state survey estimates that hunters who used South Dakota's walk-in areas last fall boosted the state's economy by at least $15 million. Larry Gigliotti of the South Dakota Game, Fish, and Parks Department says hunters used more than 1.2 million acres of walk-in land leased from farmers and ranchers last year. The hunters were asked to fill out surveys, and most hunters said they were satisfied with the program. Gigliotti says the state spent about $2.2 million on the program last year year to lease land from private landowners and open it for public hunting. Several fall hunting seasons will be finalized at a meeting of the Game, Fish, and Parks Commission. And that leads off our Black Hills Fox News briefs tonight. The commission meets this month in Pier and will take public comment before deciding season dates and other season regulations. Season's up for discussion. The East River deer season, antelope season, deer hunting on national wildlife uh, refuges, and the early fall Canada goose season. Sentencing is scheduled for a Fort Pier man who pleaded guilty in federal court to trafficking in archaeological resources. 61-year-old Scott Madison faces a maximum prison sentence of five years. He was among five men charged in a federal indictment with illegal taking and trading of American Indian artifacts and old military items. The South Dakota Supreme Court has ordered a circuit judge to take another look at a dispute involving a casino company's plan to expand in Deadwood. The Deadwood Historic Preservation Commission has twice denied Cadillac Jack's proposal to expand. The Supreme Court says Circuit Judge Randall Macy, who initially ruled in favor of the casino, must review the dispute again and take into account both state law and city ordinances. A dramatic accident is caught on tape. A, ca a car plowed into a crowded restaurant in Australia. That's our top story as Fox's Shepard Smith goes around the world in 80 seconds. Australia. Surveillance cameras show the vehicle ramming into the restaurant in Perth right after it collided with a bus. You can see a girl trying to duck there right before the car knocks her to the floor. We're told that guy jumping over the car to the nine-year-old's rescue is her father. Doctors treated her for minor injuries. Four men also got banged up a little bit. China, emergency workers rescuing a boy from a well shaft. According to state-run television, the crews tried to reach him with a rope, but the seven-year-old couldn't grab it. 
Finally, they dug the shaft out of the ground and cut it open. The whole effort lasted about 20 hours. The boy had some cuts, but it's said to be doing fine. Columbia, floodwaters powering through the streets of a seaport in the north. The high water sweeping two women right off their feet. You can see one of them in this video. Rescuers got both women. The fast currents also pushing some cars around. Egypt, archaeologists unveiling a newly unearthed double tomb near Cairo. They say it's more than 4,000 years old. The tomb includes two false doors and brightly colored paintings depicting the people buried there. One of the diggers says they were a father and son who served as the heads of the group responsible for supplying the materials used for building the place. And that's a wrap on this Fox trip around the world in 80 seconds. It's not exactly the Temple of Doom, but it can be a challenge to keep a library full of kids entertained, and that's where Indiana Bones comes in. More on that is ahead. But first, nothing captures the beauty of the Black Hills quite like an artist and their brush. More on that is coming up right after this break. What a great day to do painting earlier today. Tomorrow, much the same, a little bit warmer around the area. I'll have your weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Fix hail damage on all makes and models. Fast, friendly, experienced. Rushmore Honda Body Shop. Across from Rushmore Honda on Omaha Street, Rapid City. I'll take these. Fantastic. That'll be $400. I want to see your manager. How can I help you? Get the real deal at iMart Express. Two complete pairs of glasses are only $57.92. Two pairs of glasses with no line progressive lenses, only $97.92. Our value collection now includes metal frames. All frames come with a free warranty. And we'll have your glasses ready in about an hour. iMart Express is the real deal. <coughs> Katie, dear, meet your new boyfriend, Stu. Well, hello there. Look, you guys are on different networks and you talk and text way too much. Stu here is on our network and uh, he's a great guy. You know with my circle you get unlimited talk and text to the people who matter most. And it's affordable for the whole family. Let's please do that. Wait, so what about me? Looks like uh, they have room. Pull up a straw. My Circle, share unlimited talk and text with the whole family. And get the new HTC Hero powered by Android 2.1. At American Family Insurance, we put together a pretty special policy for the Gordon family. It's called the Dad Starting a New Business. Jesse wants to go to an Ivy League school. Mom crashed her computer, literally. And Jennifer just passed her driving test, policy. American Family works with you to choose from over 375 products and features to create your custom family protection. Is your coverage as unique as your family? show interview with American Idol's winner and runner-up. Tomorrow at 3. The Black Hills Power Cam, only on your Skyview forecast. Brought to you by Black Hills Power. Improving life with energy. This is your Skyview forecast with meteorologist Keith Gibson. Well, I was downtown for just a few minutes earlier tonight, and it was such a beautiful evening. Great day around the Black Hills. I'm surprised you came back. Me too, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> just being, uh... I just like you all so much, oh, I couldn't, thank you very couldn't much. stand staying away. Well, let's talk about another nice day coming up tomorrow, Julie, here around the area. Earlier today, we saw some friendly clouds over the Black Hills. Nothing, nothing came of these. And that's good news after the, uh, the rain, the unsettled weather we've had recently. We like to see a few summery days. We had one earlier today. The clouds went away. We are now clear. It's going to be a very quiet night and warmer than yesterday or last night. Anyway, let's just move on to the numbers here. Very warm in parts of the country today, especially here in the northwest and the southwest. Some of that heat is actually going to be moving our way as we get into the weekend. Saturday, not necessarily Sunday, but Saturday should be the warmest day of the near term. A cold front will come in from the north on Sunday and that will cool things down a little bit. That's the way the weekend's looking right now with a chance for a few scattered storms. 67 currently in Rapid City, 69 in Phillips, some 50s already in Custer at 58, 63 in Gillette, 64 in Pine Ridge. We are clear right now. 
Some false returns being picked up by the Doppler radar here in the Black Hills, but down here in Colorado, some showers and thunder showers. Nothing severe today. Not really a lot of severe weather around the nation today. We love to see that. It's been very active recently. Down here in deep south Texas, this is a tropical depression. It's falling apart, but flooding rain has been a problem in Texas. Basically, the entire state of Texas right now is under some sort of flooding advisory watch or warning. So a lot of moisture down there in the southern plains. We've also seen showers and storms over here across the mid-south into the Great Lakes today. A little bit of relief is finally making its way closer to the eastern seaboard where they have been cooking all week long. Now around here we were sunny or mostly sunny today. Tomorrow mostly sunny to partly cloudy. I cannot rule out a chance for a shower or storm somewhere in the region, especially across Wyoming, but overall it's looking pretty dry. Better chances for moisture for Saturday. Spotty storms will pop up in the afternoon. It looks like it will be the warmest day. Widespread 80s and 90s. Some spots on the plains may actually be in the mid 90s on Saturday, but not too shabby here in Custer tomorrow. 79 degrees still at risk for an isolated storm, but most likely just a few friendly cumulus clouds over the Black Hills tomorrow, much like today. 79 in Hill City, 86, however, in Hot Springs and Hermosa for you in Leeds, 79, 84 in Spearfish, 87 in Hewlett out there towards Devil's Tower. Rapid City, about 86, 89 in Pine Ridge, 88 in Wall. And tomorrow evening for the rodeo, it's looking pretty nice out there in Wall. It was pretty nice out there this evening. Upper 80s in northwestern South Dakota and across eastern Wyoming. Mid 80s will be the dominant player in Newcastle, Gillette, Wright, you name it out there in Moorcroft. Rapid City for the next seven days, about 90 on Saturday, a risk for some afternoon or evening storms. Same story Sunday, but it will be cooler, it looks like, only around 80. Some of you will stay in the 70s, so I'm adjusting things down a little bit for Sunday and Monday compared to what we were talking about yesterday. Back to 92 on Tuesday, 85 on Wednesday, and maybe a few spotty storms by Thursday. So our Friday looks great, guys. We will be working, but some of you out there will be enjoying the nice weather tomorrow, but many more of us will take advantage of the warmer weather Saturday, I believe. All right, thank you very much, Keith. The weather certainly was beautiful today, which helped highlight the natural beauty of the Black Hills. So what do you do when nature provides such a scene? Grab a paintbrush, of course. Photojournalist Dave Kidd shows us some artists doing just that in Silver City at the Plain Air Paint Out. Last year, we added a plein air painting event where we have several artists outside painting pictures of the surroundings around here. Everyone seemed to have a great time and seemed to want to come back this year, so we thought we'd try it one more time and see how it goes again. Uh, being an artist tends to be, or can be, sort of a uh, solitary you know, occupation. And so these sort of events allow us to sort of uh, mingle and find out what each other's doing. And, um, and also it, 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 it kind of gets us into other areas that maybe we, we weren't exposed to before. So it's good from that perspective too. Well, oh, it's interesting and uh, a good opportunity to meet other artists and uh, to um, get a little different view of an area that I've been familiar with since I first came here in 1957. Well, Silver City's really a beautiful place. You're surrounded by Forest Service, and you have the creek, you have Pactola Lake, and you have cabins and old church, and there's a lot of history up here. It's just a very nice, special, beautiful area. You see things in a different light when you're trying to paint them. I think a little more detail and, and just what, what is there in the structure and the background and uh, this as you try to evaluate what to, what to do with it. It's the first day of the event and uh, the weather is beautiful and the scenery is obviously gorgeous. Uh, none better in the world, I don't think. But most people just have fun. It's just fun to get out. And I heard one artist, Gary Steinle, once said it was his favorite outdoor sport. It's painting outside. Well, the Plain Air Paint Out is part of a fundraiser for the Silver City Volunteer Fire Department on Sunday. There will be a pie and ice cream social and Volks March, as well as an opportunity to buy some of that work by those artists. Very cool stuff. A cancer diagnosis is bad news. The good news, more people are overcoming the disease than ever before. The details are on the way. Also on the way, belly fat. Beware, there is a cool new way to banish the bulge. 
We'll explain coming up after the break. Menards has everything for your home improvement needs. Choose from a great selection of power tools, home decor, building materials, and more. Save big money at Menards. Save big money during Menards' anniversary sale. IKO Biltmore 35-year laminated architectural shingles have a shake-style appearance. Available in eight colors for only $23.98 per bundle. All chamber door storm doors are on sale. The classic mid-view model has view and vent roll-up screen, $149. The Astra model features an overlapping frame to improve insulation, $197. Don't miss the Menards' 50th anniversary sale. Going on now. Save big money at Menards. Excuse me? Yes. How'd you get to be a legislator? How did I get this job? Hmm. Anybody? Jason? The Marshall Plan was crucial for building. For that L. Jason? John F. Kennedy said efforts and courage. Jason, how'd you do? Mr. Black, I want, I want. Right. Jason, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm going to be president. How did I get this job? I had a lot of help. Educators help make dreams come true, one student at a time. Make plans now to attend the largest arts and crafts festival in the Black Hills. Black Hills Fox and the Spearfish Art Center invite you to the 33rd annual Festival in the Park, July 16th, 17th, and 18th. Shop at the over 170 arts and crafts booths. Enjoy the tastes of a variety of food vendors and entertainment all weekend long. There's activities for the kids and fun for the whole family. The 33rd annual Festival in the Park, brought to you by the Spearfish Art Center, Black Hills Fox, and these fine sponsors. Health Watch is brought to you by Carver Insurance, your employer group benefits, individual policy, and Medicare specialist. Real people, real news. Black Hills Fox News at 9 continues right now. It's a disease that affects countless people, not just those with cancer, but families and friends of those battling to overcome the disease. But there is good news. A new report from the American Cancer Society released this week shows more and more people are beating the disease. In these two rooms because it's a long road for those battling cancer, but for many, that journey has a light at the end. The American Cancer Society says since the early 90s, cancer mortality rates have been declining. 21% among men, 12% among women. People are doing simple steps such as stopping use of tobacco. 50% over the last uh, 50 years, tobacco use has gone down. That's over 30% of all people that die of cancer are because of tobacco use. We could save another third, which is a thousand people in South Dakota alone. The American Cancer Society says a lot of bad choices in life can result in the disease. It's estimated that two thirds of the cancer cases are because of something someone has done to themselves. The society says breast cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths for women ages 20 to 59. For women under the age of 20, it's leukemia. That's also the same for men under the age of 40. Uh, they expect to have about 4,200 um, South Dakotans die of cancer next year. Uh, this year 2010 it's like losing the city of hot springs we hope through um, education and through people knowing what kind of steps to take in their own lives to get that number down to zero that would just be truly amazing and the numbers are showing some promise thanks to better treatment earlier detection and less people smoking over the last 20 years the society says 767,000 lives were saved the American Cancer Society predicts that there will be more than 1.5 million new cancer cases this year alone, with more men getting the disease. They call it a journey through time, and the leader of that journey calls himself Indiana Bones. Today, he was enchanting kids at Rapid City's Libraries, first downtown, and here at the General Beetle Library this afternoon. With his trusty pet dragon, Draco the Sea Serpent, Indiana Bones told the kids about everything from dinosaurs to Greek myths. In real life, Indy is actually Emmy Award winner Mike McCartney, a former PBS documentary producer who is now a full-time professional storyteller. The Battle of the Bulge is getting really cold. A new procedure freezes the fat on your body in order to shrink fat cells. Fox's Dr. Joe Giovinco has more in tonight's Your Health. These days, military vet Brian Hyatt is heading into battle, but this time it's a battle against the bulge. I've done absolutely everything I used to actually be a manager of a health club. So all the fitness routines, working out with personal trainers, dieting. So Brian's using new ammunition, hoping to freeze away his excess fat. The process began six weeks ago. These are before pictures provided by his doctor. Brian's love handles were treated first. Today, he'll tackle the rest of his spare tire. 
Dermatologist Dr. Elizabeth Callahan says this device offers a non-invasive way to shrink fat. It's called the Zeltique cryolipolysis. It's uh, not surgical, so there are no injections, there's no uh, needles, there's no anesthesia. Here's how it works. A vacuum flattens the skin, creating an even surface. And you can actually see the fat being pulled into the, uh, to the device. Then the area is cooled to a temperature Dr. Callahan says is just above freezing. Uh, now he's got about an hour to occupy. Sometimes the patients like to watch movies. Um, some of them like to fall asleep. That frigid environment causes the skin to feel numb. No pain at all. As the fat cells self-destruct. Fat is injured by freezing and then it's uh, crystallized and then uh, slowly reabsorbed by the body over about a six week process. One hour later, the area beneath the device is shaped like a stick of butter. And then what we're going to be doing is just massaging the stick of butter. It's very, very cold, a little bit lumpy, and we're just massaging. We can almost feel those crystals. Just a little numb, very, very cold. Almost feels ice cubes have been sitting on my stomach for a while. A chilly approach to a problem Brian hopes to lose. Everyone's going to have that one area that they don't seem to be able to get rid of. <laughs> Looks are important. I'm Dr. Joette Giovinco, Fox News. I really don't even know what to say. I'll just be honest. I thought he looked just fine the way he was. Yes. All right. <laughs> Stay with us and saddle up for sports tonight. We take you out to the rodeo. Plus, fishermen always lament the one that got away. And now that Apple is worth billions, one man is also lamenting the big fish that he let get away. We'll explain in tonight's Fox Files. It's really important for me when I get in my car and I turn that key, I just want to go. I have a friend and I just told him, man, you're having so many problems with your car. Dude, why don't you just get a Toyota? While the reliability of a Toyota may last, the amazing deals and great selection won't during Toyota's national clearance event. Get Camry, America's best-selling car with 0% APR financing for 60 months. Or choose a $259 a month lease with zero drive-off on a 2011 Camry. Toyota, reliability to move you forward. Tonight's travel weather is brought to you by Knology. We're all connected. Well, it's still warm across the eastern seaboard tonight, not as hot as what we had earlier today or even earlier this week. Down here in the deserts, toasty warm. It was 112 in Phoenix today, still 101 in Las Vegas. Tomorrow in Vegas, maybe you're flying down there, 108, sunny and hot in the desert southwest, a little bit closer to home, Bismarck, North Dakota. Not as toasty, but 85 degrees. A lot of sunshine here in the upper Midwest, so we are looking A-OK. -okay. Even farther east, out towards Chicago and Sioux Falls and Minneapolis, still into the mid-80s for most of that region. Farther northwest, mid to upper 80s as well. Sheridan, 83, 87 in Glasgow. Still a risk for a few spotty showers or storms in parts of Colorado, 79 near Denver, Colorado. That is our Friday. For you in Gillette, 86 degrees tomorrow and Saturday. Cooler on Sunday, 78, but we're back to around 90 on Tuesday. In Spearfish, 84 tomorrow, 88 on Saturday, the warmest day of the weekend. A few spotty afternoon or evening storms will be possible. Still a risk for some storms Sunday into Monday as we cool into the 70s in Spearfish. Hot Springs a little bit warmer on Saturday, 92, 83 on Sunday and Monday, mid-90s on Tuesday, 85 on Wednesday. All right, thanks again, Keith. And here's one more look at tonight's top stories in our regional headlines. One year ago today, environmental activists breached security at Mount Rushmore. When Greenpeace hung a huge banner over the side of the carving, it caused a reevaluation of policies among park officials. Officials at Mount Rushmore said today that security has been improved with updated equipment and new procedures. Some local activists were out at Founders Park in Rapid City today, speaking out against the proposed Keystone XL oil pipeline through South Dakota. A release from the National Wildlife Federation says the event was part of a series of events around the country today. The local organizer says that the pipeline just wouldn't be safe. And South Dakota's congressional delegates say Saturday mail delivery is a must. All three say they understand the Postal Service, like many other agencies, is trying to come up with ways to meet budget constraints. But they agree the best way to achieve savings is by reducing the cost of operations. For more information on these and other stories, log on to our website at blackhillsfox.com.
Wells Fargo plans to lay off 3,800 employees over the next year as part of a restructuring of its consumer finance unit. Now that unit is separate from Wells Fargo's banking and mortgage operations. There are three Wells Fargo financial stores in South Dakota in Rapid City, Sioux Falls, and Aberdeen. Assistant VP of Communications Steve Carlson says each store currently employs anywhere from 5 to 17 people. Some of them will simply transition to other positions in other Wells Fargo units. Others may have their positions eliminated. He says those decisions will be made in the coming days and weeks. Stocks are up and unemployment is down and mortgage rates hit an all-time low. Fox's Elizabeth McDonald has the Wall Street wrap-up in tonight's Fox Means Business Report. Good news in the jobs market, boosting the stock market. The Dow gaining 120 points, blue chips rising 450 points so far this week. That wipes out almost all of last week's losses. And new claims for unemployment benefits falling by 21,000 last week. Those claims are down by 30% from last spring's peak. Mortgage rates have never been lower. Freddie Mac saying the average for a 30-year fixed loan is now 4.57%. And Chrysler now offering a money-back guarantee for most of its new cars. If you don't like it, you have 60 days to return it. Chrysler will even pay up to $1,000 of the customer's car payments. And Apple is expanding in China. The first Apple store opened two years ago in Beijing, and now the Shanghai store opens this Saturday. Apple is planning 23 more stores by the end of next year. And that's a look at business. I'm Elizabeth McDonald. For six hours only, Saturday noon to six, save big on HD TVs and appliances at Fearless Fisher TVs and Appliances. Get the number one consumer rated dishwasher, Bosch, for as low as $499, or a Bosch front load washer for only $899, or a Sony 40 inch LCD TV for only $699, a $300 savings while quantities last. Plus, buy with no down payment and no interest to paid in full within 12 months. Hurry, the six hour sale is Saturday noon to six only at Fearless Fisher TVs and Appliances in Fisher Home Galleries, West Main Rapid City. Take a vacation right in your own backyard with the 2010 Local Tourism Drive. Just log on to BlackHillsFox.com and click on the 2010 Summer Tourism Drive to see what special offers are available. Take an exhilarating 2,000-foot ride on the President's Slide for sensational family fun. You can take it slow or have a fast-paced ride for action-packed excitement. Then dine at the Alpine Grill. The Black Hills Museum of Natural History features an amazing collection of dinosaurs, fossil invertebrates, agates, minerals, and meteorites. Everything prehistoric has educational toys, books, fossils, jewelry, and a variety of gifts. Big Thunder Gold Mine is the most complete mining experience in the Black Hills. Tour an authentic gold mine, take an adventure which includes Black Hills gold mining history, geology, and museum displays. Then, take home your very own gold ore sample. For more information, log on to BlackHillsFox.com and take a vacation right in your own backyard with the 2010 Local Tourism Drive. At Subway Restaurants, if you've got $5, then you've got lots of options. Because right now, $5 gets you one of eight regular six-inch fresh value meals with chips and a drink, or one of eight regular foot-long subs. That's one of eight regular six-inch fresh value meals with chips and a drink for only $5, or one of eight regular foot-long subs for only $5. So if you're hungry and you've got $5, then you've got a lot of options. Subway. Eat fresh. When you hear the name Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs, you probably think of Apple. But does the name Ron Wayne ring a bell? Turns out he sold his 10% stake in the company for a mere $800. Dan Simon spoke with the forgotten founder. These are from Germany. And his I net have, worth is mostly tied you know, up in his coin and stamp collection. I play penny machines, mostly the poker machines. A few days a week, he drives himself to a casino, hoping one day he'll hit the jackpot. He's 76, retired, and lives in this modest home outside of Las Vegas in Pahrump, Nevada. He gets by off his monthly Social Security check. I'll put it real simple. I've never been rich. I've A lot of hungry. people face similar challenges, except how many can honestly say they could have been a billionaire more than 20 times over, if only he could have seen it. You know that when people hear your story, they say to themselves, 
my gosh, <laughs> $22 billion. Mm -hmm. He could have had it. What can I say? I mean, you, you make a decision based upon your understanding of the circumstances. And you live with it. That's, you know, that's the best you can do. There's nothing you can do about yesterday. Ron Wayne is the third founder of Apple. He designed the company's first logo and the first operating manual. With these signatures right here, Apple Computer was formed. Yes. This 1976 legal agreement shows his name alongside the well-known founders, Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. Wayne, an engineer by trade, had befriended Jobs, who he says wanted his help in forming the company. This is the contract right here. Yes. And it says Ron Wayne gets 10% of the business. Mm-hmm. And you were happy with that? Of course. I had, I had no investment in it. It was a fascinating thing. But only 11 days after Apple came into existence, Wayne had second thoughts. I felt, very honestly, that the way these guys were going, they were going to uh, bulldoze their way through anything to make this company succeed. But it was going to be a very rough ride. And if I wasn't careful, I was going to wind up the richest man in the cemetery. He says he was worried about being on the hook for debts the company would incur. At the time, Wayne's 10% stake netted him just $800. As far as I was concerned, it was found money. And I didn't want to get in anybody's way, and why should I, uh, why would I possibly do that anyhow? At the time, you were pleased to take it. Absolutely. Throughout the years, Wayne has held various jobs as an engineer. He's never had a particular fascination with computers. How many Apple products have you bought over the years? In round numbers? About as round a number as you can get. I've never owned an Apple product. Wayne says he's not jealous of Steve Jobs or Apple's success and says it's useless to waste time wondering what if. He last spoke to Jobs 10 years ago. I don't think anybody could have imagined the success that Apple did become, but I knew that it would be a successful enterprise because the people who were driving it were skilled and capable and dynamic and focused. Wayne is hoping to finally cash in on his Apple connection with a forthcoming book. The title, Adventures of an Apple Founder. Apple was established back in 1976. The company reported worldwide sales of more than $42 billion in the fiscal year ending in 2009. That is a fascinating story. That is. I appreciate the fact that he clearly isn't living with a lot of regret, which is good to see. I will admit I would. I, I think would I would too, but he doesn't, second. so good for him. Coming up, LeBron James makes his long-awaited multi-million dollar decision on free agency. And South Dakota's top golfers navigate the course in the first day of the men's match play championship. Black Hills Fox Sports is coming up next. Okay, tell me what happened again? Well, since our family's wireless bills are totally out of control. We needed some extra income. They rented out our rooms. <laughs> so, Anna, Tony Dean's a total babe, huh? <laughs> Mom! You know with my circle, you get unlimited talk and text the people that matter most. And best of all, it's affordable for the whole family. That's perfect. Woo! You're not going there. <laughs> My Circle. Share unlimited talk and text with your whole family. Hurry in now and get a shorter one-year contract with these free phones. Through Saturday, it's Fisher's CD Pillow Top Sale. Get a CD Queen Size Pillow Top Set for just $399. Or a CD Pillow Top Queen Set with Silk Wool and Memory Foam for only $599. In addition, Fisher's will give you two Memory Foam Pillows free with the purchase of any CD Pachapeak set. An extra $100 value. CD Pachapeak is designed to eliminate tossing and turning caused by pressure points. Plus, buy with no interest of paid in full within 12 months. But hurry, the sale ends Saturday at Fisher Furniture West Main in Rapid City. Update your decor with a fresh new area rug from Flooring America. Newly expanded with more than 1,000 rugs in stock, we have the largest selection in Rapid City. During our giant area rug sale, get two 100% wool rugs for $599 or four 100% olefin rugs for only $399. And two by three foot rugs are just $1,195 each. Plus, no payments or interest for 12 months with approved credit. Don't miss our giant area rug sale at Flooring America. With you every step of the way across Menard, Rapid City. The 25th Annual Hills Alive. The biggest free music event of the summer. Newsboys, Jars of Clay, Need to Breathe, Sank This Real, Arlo Girl. The special retro stage featuring Petra and Phillips, Craig, and Dean. 
dozen others on two stages. The 25th Annual Bills Alive. It's all free to attend July 16th, 17th, and 18th in Memorial Park, Rapid City. Learn more at hillsalive.com. This is Black Hills Fox Sports with Jimmy Zepp. Thanks for sticking around, folks. It's an historic day. Not because one team has won the LeBron James sweepstakes, but because after tonight, I don't have to talk about it anymore. But the heavy favorite to win the, the title next season will be the Miami Heat. I'm tired of talking about it. King James has abdicated his Cleveland throne to try and conquer the kingdom of South Beach, joining fellow All-Stars Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. James said the driving factor was he wanted an opportunity to win, turning down a potential $30 million deal in Cleveland. Along with the Cavaliers, the other teams vying for James's affections included the New York Knicks, Chicago Bulls, New Jersey Nets, and the L.A. Clippers, all of whom now hate LeBron. Now to all for the annual celebration rodeo this year, the 103rd calf roping final cowboy Brent Sutton coming through to win the performance as the last cowboy in the run with an 11.3 second two loops and the half hitch. Off to steer wrestling, here is Devin Porter coming out the gates with a 5.0 to vault to the top of the leaderboard. Brent Sutton back to work in the bulldog and he will come through with a 5.6 second run. No conspiracies on the evening for this one. Saddle Bronc action now. Second rider, Justin Mello out of Blackhawk. He will hang on for the eight seconds and score a 58 for his troubles there. Later, Whitewood's Troy Krauser on a horse. No kidding, JP. Make your own Justin Pizarro jokes at home on that one. But no score, no joke on the score. Krauser gets an 80 on this ride right there as the wall celebration rodeo continues through the weekend. I'm going to pay for that one later, I'm sure. Uh -huh. South Dakota men's match play from the golf course at Red Rock. Harrisburg Scott Novak on 18, chipping from just off the green. Nice looking chip there, a little high, but uh, would finish it off from there. Rapid City's Tyler Raketo just off on the putt here. He would have to settle for the five on the day. Back over to 16, and Sturgis's Kyle Copeland with the short finish on that green. Said he had his troubles on the course today, but no troubles on that putt there. Another Rapid City product, Brian Schulte, putting from the fringe. The pin placement was brutal for the golfers on 18 today. He'd also have to settle for the bogey five. Doug Murphy on his home course with a lengthy putt to save the par. Just comes up a hair short from getting it done. Yet another five on the scorecard. 75-year-old Marv White holding his own against the younger golfers. Drops the par putt. One of the few fours on 18 today. The South Dakota men's match play continues through Monday. Speaking of golf and history made on the course of the John Deere Classic, 46-year-old Paul Goidos working his way around the course on the 11th at 40 40 for birdie, and Goidos reads it perfectly up to 12 and another birdie opportunity, this time from about 20 feet, and Goidos blasts it up, up to, uh, to run there up the leaderboard. How about 13? Goidos continuing to roll around the course as he will find his way into the jar once again. Now up ahead to 18, and Goidos, Goidos uh, trying to finish out a strong round here. A very strong round. Fantastic approach here as he will set himself up from about seven feet out. And we'll show you the final putt here in just a moment. A nice looking shot there on the approach. And he will finish it out as Goidos becoming just the fourth player in PGA history to fire a 59 in a round and leads the way at 12 under par. Obviously, the John Deere Classic continuing through the weekend. On to the Major League Diamond we go. St. Louis Cardinals. Finishing out their series against the Colorado Rockies. Bottom half of the first, Jason Giambi smacking the short uh, shot there to center. That will score Dexter Fowler as the Rockies are on the board. Next batter is Brad Hopp, and Hopp will single in Jonathan Herrera. Colorado scoring two runs early to take a 2-0 lead. Top half of the third, now Ubaldo Jimenez getting the uh, nod on the mound, and he will come through with the strikeout on Felipe Lopez to end the inning. Top of the fourth now, and Jimenez blowing strike three right past Albert Pujols. Jimenez with six strikeouts on the day. Bottom of the fifth, Rockies up 3-1. Carlos Gonzalez on second when Giambi bloops in the single scoring Gonzalez. Giambi going four for four with two RBI on the day. Rockies will go up for one. Jimenez becoming the first pitcher to win 15 games before the All-Star break since Greg Maddox did it in 1988. The Rockies will take this one 4-2, your final score. Finally tonight, more from the, major, from the Major League Diamond. Minnesota Twins continuing their series against the Toronto Blue Jays. First inning, fans in Toronto showing up in bunches. Fred Lewis's foul ball nearly nails the lone fan, and lucky for him, he doesn't need to fend off anyone else as he goes to get the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Tickets now on sale, folks. This might make Lewis's day. Here he gets all of this Scott Baker pitch as he takes him yard for the solo home run. Jays quickly on top. One to nothing is a second inning of play. More from the long ball as Adam Lynn taking Baker deep in yard. A solo bomb of his own as the uh, 
that's not a solo home run. That's a bases loaded shot there as the bases will clear on the double. Gonzalez's is three run double makes the five nothing game. The Jays will continue to press up seven to one in the bottom half of the eighth. Jose Bautista taking this one out of the fence out of the over the fence through the woods and to grandmother's house we go. I'm kind of falling apart here I think and uh, eight one your final and that one is Toronto takes the win and I just self destructed after such a great on air burn of you. And then I just paybacks are rough, Jamie. Karma. <laughs> I'm telling you, Karma. it's rough. <laughs> so are you tired of talking about James because of the money or just it, I'm it just overrated? Both. No, I, I it's good for him it's to just be able gone to make that on kind so of long. Money. I'm just yeah. yeah. When a guy gets his own hour long special just to say five words, I'm going to Miami. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Crazy. I I don't need an hour for that. That's true. But that's right. just, just me. Just All me. Right. Let them know what you think. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. Blackhillsfox.com. <laughs> Stick with us. Keith Gibson will be right back with another check on your forecast. Also ahead, who will sit in Simon's seat and TV honors its favorite stars from the Hollywood Nation. The talk of Tinseltown is coming up when we come back. Weeknights at 11. Sunny and warm in the Badlands, tomorrow 88 degrees. It will be a pretty nice way to wrap up the work week. A little bit cooler higher up in the Black Hills, around 80, but down on the plains, widespread mid to upper 80s, maybe some low 90s in Phillip and Kadoka. Right here in Rapid City, we are looking at about 86 degrees, 90 on Saturday, 80 on Sunday, 80 on Monday. Better chances for moisture here this weekend into early next week. So there could be an isolated storm tomorrow, but better chances will exist for the weekend. Finally tonight, the Emmy nominations are out and a new judge is to be seated on American Idol. But the big question is, will the show's producers do what Simon says? I hope so. Fox's Adam Housley has more from the Hollywood Nation. The nominations in the comedy series. The nominees for the 2010 Primetime Emmy Awards are out and Fox's Glee takes in the most nods of any series. The hit song show scored 19 nods, giving them a chance to steal the crown from the once unbeatable 30 Rock. Uh, with respect to Miss Lohan's uh, uh, performance in the program. Crime pays, uh, at least for Lindsay program. Lohan. Uh, Reports are after she gets out of the clink, interviewers better have deep pockets. Deals are reportedly in the works to secure the troubled star's first post jailhouse interview for a whopping $1 million. I I've got to be honest with you, Lee. Simon Cowell has picked his top one, choice right? to replace him in the chair next to Kara. The now former idol judge says Harry Connick Jr. is his favorite to take over his role on TV's number one show. We'll see if he gets his way when Fox reveals his replacement later this summer. And speaking of American Idol, the Idol Live Summer Tour is ending sooner than anyone expected. Organizers have canceled eight dates from the road show, making its last stop in Indianapolis at the end of August and the finale on September 14th in Pittsburgh. In Hollywood, Adam Housley, Fox News. Hmm. Interesting stuff. I personally, big fan of Harry Connick Jr. I think he would be good for American Idol. Yeah. Jamie's laughing, so yay, just, nay. No, I, that sounds fine. I just wanted to say, let's kick the tires and light the fires, Big Daddy, is line from <laughs> Independence Day. Oh, my goodness. Have there you thought you of that one? That was just on this past weekend because of the holidays. Or Independence sure Day. Was several times. <laughs> enough, <laughs> about, <laughs> enough about Harry Connick Jr. Let's move on to other music. The Orlando Chamber soloists are back in the Black Hills this summer, once again serving as artists in residence. They've been traveling around the region educating and entertaining with their musical talents. Tonight, with the help of local kids, the Orlando Chamber soloists performed a children's concert called Urban Scenes at the Doll Arts Center. So we will say goodnight for now and let you take a listen. Enjoy. The latest study shows that people who don't sleep well sleep better on a new mattress, 65%.